your day and welcome back to Dust and Grace. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rachel. I'm a homemaking mum and I live in a small town in Queensland, Australia. It occurs to me I haven't introduced myself in a little while. So, today we're going to be talking about some of my favourite books. And someone asked a little while ago if we could do this. And I just didn't get around to it. So I thought now's probably a good time. And a little change of pace from our Bible studies. So. I've got a pile of books here. And I'm very excited to share with you why. I like these books. So, before we get into it, let's take a moment to settle ourselves in. Take a few deep breaths and focus on this moment. Stop scrolling, stop checking messenger, just focus. Allow your mind time to relax and let go, to just be here. Okay. The council are out doing some mowing, so I'm sorry if there's any strange noises. Yes, I'll just go from the top down. Uh, obviously this is in no uh, specific order because the Bible is down here. It's just in order of the size of the books. So. The first book I have here is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I read this for the first time last year and I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it. There are good morals, a wholesome story, a very interesting plot so far as Peter is concerned. The whole thing was just fascinating and so whimsical to me. As a child, I didn't play much in the sense of how normal children would play together. Uh, and we hear about how children be children in this book and I learned so much from reading and becoming a mother. Reading this was a very valuable experience and it gave me so many ideas and realizations I think because you hear about uh, children playing uh, pirates and you know, the good guys vanquishing the pirates. Um, the kind of games that children don't necessarily come up with unless they're suggested to them through the use of storytelling. No, I don't remember ever playing swords or having sword fights or 
imagine her playing anything that required a lot of imagination. I remember playing shops. You know, we'd set up and have scrunched up paper for fruits and, you know, I'd play shopkeeper. Or we'd set up and we'd play church with all the teddies coming to church or whatever. Or we'd play cars. And those were things that we played, I would assume, because they were things we were exposed to and we understood. And I struggled with things that required too much imagination. And I'm very excited for the day that my daughter becomes old enough to understand stories to the point that we can read this as a bedtime story and have a chapter a night. This is, I think, a brilliant essence of imagination for someone who struggles to imagine. This is like a handbook for how to imagine and what it's like to be a child and yeah, I learned so much from this book. This specific edition, I'll read you the back blurb, but this specific book is published by Chilton. Chilton Publishers and published in 2022. I really appreciate this publisher because the books are very well made and they don't actually cost you an arm and a leg most of the time. They're frequently on sale. So You've got a textured cover. These little pictures are all uh, embossed. Beautifully designed. It's metallic in places. Titles also embossed on the spine as well. And the paper on the inside is thicker. It's heavier. It's like uh, magazine paper almost but you know it's like magazine paper in that it's very very smooth and it's got that sort of magazine feel to it but it's very thick and sturdy it's got the uh, I think it's called gilding I could be wrong uh, the gold coloring to the pages on the ends and best of all it is stitch bound and being stitch bound means that in theory this book will absolutely outlive a paperback equivalent so this is what I would probably call a collector's edition just going off how it presents uh, how it's bound how sturdy it feels when you hold it in your hands Back blurb says, all children, except one, grow up. Peter Pan is that exception, a fearless, resourceful boy who befriends the three darling children, Wendy, John and Michael, teaches them to fly and whisks them away to Neverland. There they encounter the lost boys, a princess in peril and villainous Captain Hook in a magical adventure story as ageless as its intrepid hero. You'll notice a pattern that all of my favourite books are quite old. Um, I'm not sure when this was first published. Let's see if we can find out. Hmm, no.
but going off the um, the writing style, you'd assume it was, you know, prior to or during the very early 1900s, um, because old books have a lot more morals. Uh, they have substance and it's worth reading because you can learn about life, you can learn about how to deal with situations and you can even sometimes learn about God which brings us to our next author these books are by possibly my favourite author I enjoy thoroughly all of his books including these and the reason, other than his writing style, that I enjoy these books is because religion and thoughts on God and God's providence are woven into each story, especially The Count of Monte Cristo by Tomas. Now, some of Tomas is writing is, you know, you question the moral actions of the characters. Um, the Three Musketeers, the first book in that series titled The Three Musketeers some of the characters behave in ways that you think what is going on but for the most part Dumas never glorifies those actions if anything he he shames those characters he tends to bring them to justice um, the Count of Monte Cristo is just so interesting because it brings up so many thoughts on God and how God works and you know these books should never be taken as sermons in themselves as always you should consult the Bible before anything else and prove all things but I find these works very interesting and encouraging because when you use discernment while you're reading them you can learn a lot you also learn a lot about how Previously, perhaps during the 1800s, people would have thought, and it's very educational and encouraging. And in contrast to today's literature, you, I don't know, I read modern authors and I'm left sitting there thinking, what was the point of that? I mean, even some Christian authors, the morals are good, the storylines are okay, but in contrast to these authors, you finish reading it and you're like, I feel like I lost brain cells. It's just, it's so easy to read and there is a reason for that. Um, most authors, newspapers, etc., um, they're written to a grade eight literacy level because that is the average literacy of people today um, grade 8 in school which is concerning because a lot of these stories Peter Pan is a children's book you read it in contrast to today's authors and grown adults struggle to read it and you think there was a time when 10 year olds would read this, possibly younger than 10, they would read this and it wouldn't be a hard slog because they were well educated, it was made a priority that you knew how to use the English language. So that's another reason that I gravitate towards these older writings because literacy today is reflected by modern authors and not only do they lack morals, they lack depth, they lack dynamic, a lot of them lack good plots even. And 
and just the writing style is disconcerting for me. I would rather read something that exercises and strengthens my my morals, my mind, my brain cells, <laughs> uh, rather than reading something really easy that I can breathe through, knock over in a couple of days, and then just get high because I finished reading a book. Um, so I've been I've read The Count of Monte Cristo. I've read The Lady of the Camellias. This one was. beautiful and moving and challenges your perceptions I guess uh, and I've read the first book The Three Musketeers I've read half of the second book which is it's titled 20 Years After and I believe there's a third book as well all of his writing I thoroughly enjoy. It's hard slog initially to get into older authors because our brains are, you know, they're attuned to that grade A reading level that is pushed as the norm in today's society. But after reading one or two of Demas's books, I was completely hooked. And now when I pick up writing and I start reading it is like I can tell if it's written by him because it's like sitting with an old friend you're attuned to the way that they speak and it's comforting to hear their voice and it's the same with this writing because the style is unique it stands out but it's easy to read now because I'm familiar with it and it's like sitting with an old friend and just having him tell me a story and I really like that. Now this book, this uh, might be from the 60s. Uh, it's published by Heron Books Publication. It is stitch bound and it's got some foxing on the pages but otherwise it's in very good condition. And I, I really gravitate towards buying these old books when I find them as well because they're generally much uh, more durable than today's equivalent. This one, thankfully, is also stitch bound. This publisher, I think, is much more pricey. Uh, they do their fake leather covers. So I think the, the cover might deteriorate at some stage but I've had this for quite a few years now and it's still in almost perfect condition in terms of the cover. This is published by World Cloud Classics San Diego. I have the Three Musketeers in the same uh, the same publisher. Now the end pages have not been very well attached here, I don't think, because we can see they're starting to tear off. But that's an easy fix, and we can just go back in and whack a new one on and strengthen it. Um, I'm, I don't think it's going to fall out. But the book itself is stitch bound, which is very good. It's probably going to last a while. If anything, I would say it's a bit too loosely bound, but um, you know, you can hold it open like this and the pages will fall down uh, fairly well. Now I can see by looking in here that some of the cards on the back are coming off. Some of the um, strengthening I guess the reinforcement is peeling away from the spine and the cardboard of the actual spine itself is starting to tear and break so that is very disappointing for the amount of money that they charge for this this publisher so um, I'd actually probably avoid this publisher in future seeing that 
because I've only read this book uh, one, maybe one or one and a half times and that shouldn't be happening in there but it is stitch bound which means that I can repair it later on and also the um, the cutting of those pages is quite bad so you can I don't know if you can see over here the pages haven't been cut into that shape so some you sometimes get a machine that goes over this once the book has been put together to level it all out and it's clearly not worked there's even a little nick on one of those pages so in summary this is probably not the way to go world cloud classics <laughs> um, but it is oh man that's that's a bit really bad actually this is coming off at the top as well the head is peeling off oh my goodness that is disappointing just have a moment of silence because I thought that this was a good publisher <laughs> and it's, it's just disintegrating uh, the more I look at it okay let's put that down before I you know start ripping it apart to fix it <laughs> Now this, this is a well-made book, okay? This will restore our hope in uh, publishers that there are people who can publish well-made books. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the Bible. As I said, in no particular order were these books shown. This is the Holy Bible, ESV, English Standard Version, published by Crossway. And I've had this, I think, for over a year now. And this, this gilding, these gold words, none of it's come off yet. It's all very well applied. It's not peeling. Nowhere in the cover are there gouges or any bad marks. And I don't necessarily look after this book. This is covered, I think, with buffalo leather, but I could be wrong. This is probably the only bad thing that's happening. Um, this bit is peeling off from the cover, but we could just go in there with a little bit of glue, dab it in, uh, put some pressure on the top of the book, and that's just going to fix that straight away. The rest of it, very sturdy. Um, the end page isn't ripping off. It's very, very sturdy. There's absolutely no tearing or separation in there. As I said, I've had this, I think, for over a year. If we look down the spine, that's very um, firmly bound, so you can't really even get a peek down there unless you open it like this. There's a tiny bit of lifting away, but again, you can just, if it gets too bad, go in there with some PVA glue. You just don't want to use a glue that's um, acidic. You want to use a water-based glue. Um, yeah, it's stitch bound. It lies open very, very nicely. Uh, you don't have to force the pages or anything, which is a sign that it's been very well made. Uh, the ribbon isn't coming off. It's in brilliant condition for a book that's been thoroughly thoroughly used and opened at the very least once a week so crossway uh the crossway journaling bible very very highly recommended this is just this will i feel like this will survive anything uh it's a bit more expensive but if you want it to fully last this is absolutely the way to go have a coffee break. <laughs> Try not to splash the microphone. I got this mug because our ute has the most ridiculous cup holders ever. 
like you could probably fit a small, maybe at a stretch, a medium McDonald's takeaway cappuccino in the cup holder. And even then you'd, you'd struggle to get it out of the center thing because there's a radio directly above it. I could not find a travel mug that would fit in the center console cup holders. They're just so tiny and so poorly placed. Um, and this is the only one that I could find to fit in the door card. Um, so this, thankfully it has a really good lid. So you can whack it in the door card and not be scared of it spilling everywhere. But it wobbles around a tiny bit, uh, but not enough to spill. So I do now uh, officially belong to the Yeti Tumblr Club purely out of necessity. <laughs> Final book. This may book may be my favorite book of all time. I've got a quote on the wall from it, and um, actually, I wrote the main quote up here. Before I read the second one, I forgot that the second quote was in there, so I wrote the second quote in the flowers, and it says, uh, the main quote, watch and pray, dear, never get tired of trying, and never think it is impossible to conquer your fault, said Mrs. March. Then in the flowers it says, the patience and the humility of the face she loved so well was a better lesson to Joe than the wisest lecture, the sharpest reproof. Mrs. March is such a beautiful image of motherhood and I think I've been searching for good examples of motherhood. I'm just going to draw you closer it's getting a bit loud outside and as soon as I did that he drove away seriously <laughs> oh the timing is impeccable okay um but yeah I've been looking for a good godly mother figure to uh, sort of take guidance from I I'm realizing that I know Jesus and I've known God my whole life, but my perceptions have been thoroughly, thoroughly tainted and warped by things that I was taught about them that were untrue, about his personality that were incorrect, and my views of other things like what it means to be a parent, what it means to be a mother, are quite... Um, vague, I think, what it means to be a good Christian mother and raise your children while while demonstrating those fruits of the Spirit while, and being able to offer sound guidance, biblical truth, wisdom in a way that builds up and encourages and comforts and in the character of Mami that shines through so well. This book, I did not realize how religious it was. It's like, I think I described it to my husband as Pilgrim's Progress for women <laughs> in an easier reading style. Uh, every single chapter of Little Women is like a moral lesson. I learned so much from all of it, how to be a mother, what it means to be a mother, that it's possible to be a mother and to be loved by your children. It's possible that you can get to the end of their childhood and they will love you and they'll come to you for advice and comfort. And those ideas I think I didn't necessarily believe before. I've, I knew some children who seemed to love their mothers and 
coming from my own experiences. I judged them and I thought that they were childish, but now I'm realizing that, wait, that's a valid experience. There is hope. <laughs> so, I've been learning so much from this book, and if you are a mother or an expectant mother, whether you have sons or daughters, I would recommend reading this book, if only to experience the character of Mami and to be encouraged by her demonstration of motherhood. I just, I cannot recommend this book enough. And my husband got me this uh, as an anniversary present. This is Little Women and Other Novels by Louisa May Alcott. I've read Little Women, which is the first book. This actually includes Good Wives as well. Good Wives is the second part of Little Women. So this is published as, it's all published as one book in two volumes, Little Women and Good Wives. And then you have Little Men and Joe's Boys as well. A Little Women itself, the first book, is the most encouraging to me so far. The second part, Good Wives, is it's good, but Mommy doesn't feature as heavily, and I think she was my real selling point for reading it and being so absorbed by it, because seeing her demonstration of motherhood is really what I was craving, and it's giving me this new picture of what it means to love and what it means to be loved, and I think it's shaping my view of God as well, being the parent figure and how God might respond to our sins and our shortcomings, not out of wrath and fury, but out of mercy and the knowledge that we've already been forgiven if we are Christian and we have the Holy Spirit within us. And so... I would strongly recommend reading. I put these edges on to protect the book. Uh, it, I don't know, I think this is a Angus and Robertson. Ah, uh, Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble New York publication. It's very, very beautifully done. Very very detailed cover, but it's not what I would call high quality. The, um, the cover is a bit uneven. Uh, the edges uh, already had the pink flaking off, off them when I unwrapped it from the store. Uh, and you can see a bit here as well. The pink is just chipping away because it's not uh, properly done. I assume that it's just painted really. Um, painted fake leather or something. But I put these edges on to preserve its life a little longer, to keep those corners secured. It's got this very lovely end paper. And other than that, it's quite well done. The paper is... Um, let me try and get one page. <laughs> the paper's quite sturdy. It's not that magazine paper, but it's still very, uh, very durable, I would, I would guess. It's stitch bound. So if slash when the cover completely crumbles, I'll just rip it out and give it a new one. It's got the gold gold along the bottom. And it's just a really beautiful, beautiful book. It's got a ribbon as well, which I really like, being such a long story. I am, um, yeah, I just, I love this. I'll take some quiet time and a leaf out of Amy's book and I'll come in here. I've got my little uh, my cross on the wall, my quotes, photos of family to remind me to pray and 
who to pray for and I'll just come in here and have have some quiet time and try to focus myself and pray and I'll read some more at my desk because it's quite a big book. I've got a paperback, a copy of Just Little Women on my shelf up here and I think I'm going to keep that because Just Little Women itself is so encouraging to me so that might be like my um little guidebook <laughs> to just take with me uh, if I can't lug this around or if I'm going somewhere that this might get damaged you know, holiday, a long drive, etc. So, I've also used little magnetic bookmarks to mark interesting things. This specific publication has some spelling errors, some, uh, you know, really quite, quite disappointing errors. Uh, you know for a fact that this has gone through a computer that they have used spell check and that they've still missed some very 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 obvious issues which is a bit uh, discouraging again because of the amount that you pay. It also discourages me a bit because these authors, I assume that the reason we have so many uh, beautiful editions of classic books now is because they've passed from copyright so these publishers can just swoop in and print the version that they want to print, maybe whack in a few editing errors so they're not copy struck or something. I don't know how it works, but all of these publishers are publishing the same books. Some of them are charging incredible amounts of money for very poorly done work. Um, this was $50, I think. And honestly, I guess it's worth $50. It is stitch bound. It's nice in appearance. The cover obviously took a lot of design and work and it will deteriorate, but it's nice for now. Um, Penguin Classics, I believe I did a video previously unboxing four books uh, by the Bronte sisters. They absolutely, I would not recommend. It's a paper bound book that's been made to look like one of these well made books. Uh, well-bound books. So uh, if you were to get any of these I wouldn't recommend World Cloud Classics unless you want to rebind, not rebind, but recover your book at some stage. I would 110% recommend Chilton, uh, the Chilton books. They're very very well made and it's um, it's not a fake leather cover or anything, so that's going to last a lot longer than these fake leather things. If something's fake leather, on principle, don't get it. It won't last long. But, you know, if you just want something very pretty that you don't mind if it gets a bit scuffed up or you're just going to have it on your shelf, then these Barnes & Noble ones are very nice. So, that brings me to the end of this book collection. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any book recommendations or publisher recommendations that are the, uh, you know, standard of Chilton. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you next time.